When I started to route Super Mario Odyssey without the left joystick, I had a goal. I wanted to find out if it is possible to beat Odyssey with no more than two instances where the left joystick is needed. The thing is the following. There is one joystick input required during the frog tutorial and there is another one definitely required during the outro of the game. We have to use the joystick during the final chase sequence, there's just no way around it. However, if the only joystick users are during the intro and the outro of the game, that would mean that the left joystick is optional from the second we uncapture this frog up until after we defeated Bowser during the final showdown. That's basically the whole game and this is what I was hoping to pull off. In the last video we already took a look at all kingdoms up until the lost kingdom and were only forced to use the joystick during the frog tutorial. And today we will finally find out if it is possible to beat Super Mario Odyssey with only those two joystick users. So you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so the first challenge we face today is the Metro Kingdom and stuff immediately starts pretty complicated. The busy Metro Kingdom is in trouble. A huge and gigantic mecha wiggler is attacking the city and we are the only ones able to stop it. The wiggler is on top of the city hall building and the only way to make it up there is by going through this section. That's the huge first problem of the day because the first person view is disabled here. Which is very unfortunate because the first person view is our best way to perform the important task of turning around. Around. This means we're left with only two ways of reorientating, sledge grabbing and taking damage. Whenever Mario is hit by an evil enemy, he decides to turn towards the source of damage. So our brother in spirit, I say, took a look at this section and he actually found an insanely complicated way to make it to the top of this tower, just by grabbing ledges at the right times, getting hit by enemies in perfect ways and about 5 minutes of backflipping along a wall at the end. It's pretty bonkers. The clip is over at his wonderful channel and I highly recommend checking it out, because the way he did it isn't the way we are going to do it. Huge thanks to all you wonderful ladies ladies and gentlemen who left me comments below the first video telling me about the cappy ground pound trick. So as it turns out we have another option to turn around. An option I missed while doing the first half of the routing. We're actually able to reorientate our plumber by ground pounding as cappy close to Mario in the two player mode. This is incredibly helpful because it gives us an easy option to change direction even when the first person view is locked. This allows us to grab tons of moons I previously believed to be impossible and this allows us to make it to the top of the city hall building without too many problems. Hooray! The mecha wiggler boss isn't too difficult since taking aim with the tanks is done by using motion controls which means that we now only have to find a way to grab the 17 missing moons in metro and we're good to go. Luckily we have tons of different moon options as soon as the the evil machine wiggler is trashed. The only moons here that are remotely challenging are the ones obtained by beating the swing pole challenges. We can't get momentum while we grab one of the swing poles because getting momentum requires us to use the left joystick. Luckily however we are still able to swing off the poles if we hit the jump button immediately after grabbing them. This makes those challenges a bit harder but they are still very much possible. Other than that there aren't many more problems in a metro kingdom which means that this kingdom can be beaten without the left joystick. Hooray! Next it's time for the snow kingdom. So the snow kingdom is a problem. We need to get 10 moons here in order to leave it again and we have very very few moon options. We can't get rid of the snow here which makes most of the power moons in this level unavailable. So the easy moons first. We can get one by speaking with the toad behind the snow, one just floats in Chivaria town, one can be obtained by just buying it. There are two moons at the top of the town which we can reach by platforming over this little wall decor thingy. We can get the first moon in the windchill cavern with ease, one in the snowy mountain section and another one in the ice cave. That's eight moons and then, then we're out of easy moon options. A couple of moons are just straight up impossible to reach for us. We can't get the one that requires us to move as a Goomba stack onto the switch for example. Neither are we able to platform to this treasure chest and so on. So the dumb two missing moons. The first moon we're able to grab is the one in the hollow crevasse area. Here we have to first grab five moon shards that are spread over this whole area and afterwards we have to platform to the top of this platform where the moon spawns. The problem here is once again that the first person view is disabled. Because of this our best option to turn around is by cappy ground pounding ourselves. Sadly this is extremely difficult to do here because the cave is the natural habitat of an extremely dangerous foe. The cave is inhabited by dangerous biting ice snakes whose favorite meal 
is Plummer. Those snakes relentlessly try to take a good bite off of our favorite Italian hero. Whenever we get bitten, we change orientation, which is extremely annoying. Since the snakes always raise us into the air before they try to devour us, Cappy likes to glitch out. Our second best Cap ever featured in a video game always gets stuck inside the stupid snakes. Getting the five moon shards isn't that complicated. The challenge is to orientate Mario in such a way that he faces exactly towards the platform where the moon sits. Pulling this off took me several hours, but I was able to do it. So after I got this moon, I was chatting with Issei a bit and told him what a struggle getting up there was. It took Issei literally 22 minutes to make it up there. So why was Issei able to make it up there so fast? Well, mainly because I'm an idiot. I completely forgot that we were able to orientate Mario by wall jumping. The whole Cappy reorientating fiasco is completely unnecessary. Whoops. Anyway, now we need to get one last moon. And this moon is guarded by an evil, even more horrific foe. It's guarded by the worst wedding planning bunny rabbit I have ever encountered. We have to defeat Rango on ice. This fight is really hard to pull off for several reasons. First, we're only able to enter first person view when we're standing perfectly still something that's really hard to do on ice. Second and even more problematic, the timing window to give Rango the headbutt he objectively deserves is way smaller during this fight compared to our first encounter. It took me many many attempts until I finally won the fight against this dumb bunny. But it is possible, which means that the dorky snow kingdom can be beaten without ever using the left joystick. We're still on track. Hooray! Our next stop is the beautiful lake kingdom. The Lake Kingdom is a very welcome change in pace after snow. There really isn't much going on here. We have tons and tons of different moon options and there is no major roadblock. It's a really relaxing break in between all the difficult challenges. I really don't know what to say about Lake, it's just a place to breathe a bit and to recharge energy for the upcoming kingdoms. So let's just take a look at relaxing landscape scenes while listening to calming music for a second before we go on. That was relaxing. So no left stick uses in Lake. I hope everyone is feeling refreshed now, because stuff is only going to get more complicated from here on. Next, the delicious Lanchian Kingdom. Lanchian is a problem. Our first objective here is to grab the multi-moon on top of the volcano. Only if we reach this moon, enough moons become available to repair the Odyssey. This section here is why this is so troublesome. Here we are supposed to mind control a dumb pan bro, because as it is known, only pan bros are able to remove cheese and cheese is blocking this switch. This switch raises the path towards the volcano. Sadly, we aren't able to move as a pan bro. We can't reach the cheese, nor are we able to throw our dumb pans far enough. We just aren't able to get the silly pan bro close enough to the switch without the left joystick. Luckily, there is a way to solve this little problem. There is a way to move as a nasty pan bro without actually moving. So check this out. Did you notice it? Here we capture one of the stupid pan swinging turtles and uncapture it immediately again. This makes the ugly turtle move a tiny bit. That's all we need. All that we have to do here is to capture and to uncapture the behavioral problems displaying turtle over and over again to make it move slowly into the direction of the cheese switch. Pulling this off is kinda tricky because not only is it tempting to kill the pan bro, once and for all on purpose, but it's really easy to commit turtle homicide by accident here. However, it allows us to activate the switch joystickless. This opens up the path to the multi-moon and gives us access to the 18 moons required to leave the kingdom again. Another kingdom down. We're making insanely good progress here. We're still on track to hit our two input goal and there are only three kingdoms left. Hooray! The ancient kingdom is the next one. The question here is quite simple. The question is, are we able to slay the dragon? So the dragon fight is troublesome for two reasons. First, it requires really precise movement to rip out all the dragon's nose piercings in time. And second, the camera can't be manipulated during this fight. The first person view is still enabled, just normal camera controls are locked. Because of this, turning around takes longer than usually here. So Mario and I lost many, many lives while grinding this fight. But it is possible to defeat the dragon without the joystick, which means that the ancient kingdom isn't stopping us either. So at this point, I got really, really excited. Only Bowser's kingdom and the moon kingdom are left. And there wasn't a single unplanned, unenjoyable joystick accident so far. All that we have to do is to make it through Bowser's and to the church. And we have proven that there is no joystick use required in Odyssey outside of the intro and the outro of the game. Sadly, this is the point 
where everything starts to become insanely complicated. So everything is fine until we defeat the two Brutals and Bowsers, but immediately after those bosses, the Pokio fiasco begins. Holy fuzzy, the game now stupidly wants us to proceed as a dumb bird. We first have to climb this wall as a bird until we hit this checkpoint. Then we have to climb this wall as a bird until we are at the top of the kingdom and finally the game forces us to defeat the terrifying Mecha Brutal, once again making heavy use of stupid Pokios. Pokios are the worst. We can't move Pokios in any way. We are able to flick upwards as a bird by using motion controls, but we aren't able to reach the walls we have to climb. Theoretically the Pokios chase us and theoretically we are able to lure them towards the spots we want them to be. But this doesn't work either. The problem is that the dumb birds always spawn on a different layer than the wall. It's hilariously stupid, but the Pokio can't make it over this little ledge and because of this little ledge we aren't able to lure him to the wall. We could capture it, jump up and uncapture again, but if we do this then the silly bird just shakes its head in confusion afterwards and refuses to chase us again. Sadly, I wasn't able to solve this problem. But luckily, just because I'm not able to solve a problem doesn't mean that no solution exists. Once again, our joystick avoiding hero, I say, came out of nowhere and saved the day. He made two huge discoveries. The first one is that while we aren't able to move as a Pokio, we're still able to change orientation if we do a motion control spin attack and then command the mind controlled Pokio to grow its ugly beak, then the bird immediately stops to spin. That's huge. It's all we need to reach the first wall. We're able to lure it to this corner, then to capture it and then to do a very precise beak spin stop so that the bird hits this ledge close to the wall we want to climb. Now all that's left to do for us is to jump up and to turn around again so that we face the wall and suddenly we're able to climb upwards. That's the first Pokio problem solved. Next the outer wall section. Here we need to find a way to get the Pokio up to this area without capturing it. Luckily I say once again managed to find a way to do exactly this. I think we should give I say a short jingle considering how often he saved us during this routing. Yeah, let this be the I say saved us jingle. All that we have to do is to position ourselves close to the Pokio and to throw our second best cap behind it. Then wait until it attacks and then counterattack it at the same time by shaking our Joy-Cons. If everything worked out, then the hit pushes the Pokio over the ledge. All that's left to do now is to lure it towards the wall and hooray! The second stupid Pokio problem is solved. Next, the brutal battle. So here we are actually able to damage the boss's feet with the dangerous bomb balls. All we have to do is to lure the mech away from the bird, then to capture the disgusting Pokio and to do a spin attack to throw the balls back. Pulling this off is honestly one of the most tedious things I ever attempted in a video game. It's so annoying, but it doesn't matter how ridiculously straining this is as long as it allows us to avoid the left joystick. The real problem here is something different. See, in order to kill this machine, we have to hit the four brutals that control it. After hitting the legs, the boss always falls down, which allows us to climb towards the mech controlling rabbits and to actually damage them. The intended way to make it up there is once again as a Pokio, but if we are fast, we don't need it until the very last phase of the battle. Because for the final hit, the boss doesn't fall down, but stupidly kneels. We can't climb the boss when it kneels. Because of this and because of how incredibly tedious the whole fight is, I came to the conclusion that it is impossible to do. And then I say, once again proved me wrong. So what did I say do? Well, he found an incredibly smart way to solve the kneeling problem. The thing is the following. The boss always kneels when the game wants us to hit Harriet, the last bunny. But only because the game intends us to hit this rabbit last doesn't necessarily mean that we have to listen. What I said did was just to hit Harriet during the first phase instead of hitting it last. This solves the kneeling problem and makes the boss beatable. The whole clip of how he did it is over at his wonderful channel. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to the moon. We're almost done here. We don't have to worry about collecting moons anymore. We were able to defeat Bowser during the final showdown using the same tricks we used in Cloud. We almost did it. All that's left to do for us is to reach the church where the wedding takes place, which we plan to crash. And this is the point where the whole run, sadly, falls apart. So there are two ways to make it to the church. The first and intended way is to go through the cave. 
This is sadly not going to happen without the left joystick. In the cave, we first are forced to fly over a gigantic lava pit as a dry bone, which requires us to use the joystick. And then, then the game wants us to fly over an even more gigantic lava pit as a bullet bill. The bullet bills here sadly fly into the wrong direction, which means flying over here requires another joystick input. The Madame Brutal fight at the end is theoretically possible. We're able to throw the chain chomp into her dumb face by using motion controls, but reaching her without the left joystick is sadly not going to happen. This path is obviously locked for us. Luckily, we at least have the option to do the cave skip. For those not familiar, it is possible to skip the whole cave section in its entirety by doing a pretty precise wall jump trick at this wall. The Odyssey speedrun uses this neat little oversight to save a couple of minutes and we are able to use it to save at least one joystick input. Sadly, however, it still adds one joystick input to our total. Yeah, um, that's it. That's how dreams die. It's sadly over. The literally last obstacle before the outro kills this run. <sighs> That's so frustrating. We came so incredibly far. We found a way to collect 125 moons without the joystick. We defeated each and every boss without walking. We hit Mario's head against walls more times than anyone would consider to be healthy. We even found a way to route around the dumbest species of birds ever featured in a video game. Yet this run dies at the very end. There is nothing we can do about it. There are three places in the game where the joystick is required. Wait, what? I say, the madman actually found a way to save the last joystick input. He didn't find a way to skip the cave without the joystick. Believe it or not, he actually found a way to make it through the cave joystickless. Here's what he did. So first this lava pit. Here it is possible to make it to this pillar with a very precise triple jump. But then stuff becomes problematic. We can't reach the other pillar from here and there is no way to damage boost through the lava. Or at least I thought that there is no way. But I say proved me wrong. If we first throw Cappy, keep him in position and then belly dive directly below the spot where Cappy is floating, then we take damage, bounce up to Cappy, bounce off of Cappy and regain control over Mario. This makes this procedure repeatable. Yep, as long as we grab 3 extra hearts, we're able to damage boost over this gap this way. Now there's only this lava lake, standing between us and the perfect 2 left stick route. Just watch how I say solve this problem. First he manipulated the position of the huge bullet bill in such a way that it faces into the direction we want to fly. Then he did a really precise jump to capture it and flew it over to this platform. Here he positioned our heroic plumber in this spot because then the second bullet bill flies towards Mario in such a way that he faces directly to the end of this section. Once we capture it, we're able to triumphantly fly over the whole obstacle. That's it, the cave can be done without the left joystick. Only the first and the final area require us to use the left stick. Every other area in Super Mario Odyssey can be done without walking. Hooray! I'm so glad this is possible. Huge, gigantic, enormous and tremendous thank you to Isei. He has been an insane help during the whole routing of the game, as you probably noticed by now. I highly recommend to head over to his channel and to take a look at all the amazing things he has done to Odyssey. So yeah, here we have it. The minimum amount of joystick inputs required to beat Super Mario Odyssey is two. That was by far the most complicated thing I looked into so far. With that being said, thanks for watching this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially pokier today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!